Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths channel. This is a question that I've been requested on the channel for me to answer by one of the students. Um, this is from the P3 textbook, chapter one, chapter review one, um, and algebraic methods. This is from the Edexcel Pearson's um, textbook for the international A-level. Um, and this question, um, part A, says simplify fully. This is question five, part A, simplify fully this you know it's a product of these two algebraic fractions so when you want to um multiply algebraic fractions together or any fractions together for example if i had something like say um three over five times let's say um seven over 14 something like this okay one of the things that we try to do before we um simplify in fact i'll change this to something a bit more Three over five, let's say, times say um, ten over twelve or tw ten over ten over twenty-one, something like that. Yeah, that's better. All right. One of the things that we can we can do, we can actually multiply the whole thing together and get thirty over five times twenty-one, which is going to be one hundred and five, and then try to cut to cancel out common factors. But what, what's normally easy for us to do is, is basically to try to cancel out common factors. So what we're actually doing first before we start, we said let's try to factorize whatever we can. So this 10 can be written as 5 times 2. And the 21 can be written as 7 times 3. And then anything in the denominator can cancel with anything in the numerator. So we can cancel out the 5 and the 5 and the 3 and the 3. And we're left with 2 over 7. Okay. Um, and that makes life a bit easier for us rather than multiplying everything out and then trying to simplify all right so similarly with algebraic fractions it's sensible for us to do the same thing so we try to factorize every you know term that we can and then try to cancel out any common factors before we start multiplying so we can see very clearly that the numerator has a common factor here of 4 and x so we can write this as 4x and then we're left with x minus 2 and the denominator has, well, this can be factorized as a quadratic. And we can write this with two brackets straight away because it's just got 1x squared. And we find it's going to be x here and x here, of course. That will give you x squared. The two signs must be different because the product here is negative. So it's going to be a positive and a negative number. And the two numbers here multiply to give you negative 4 and add to give you negative 3. Well, the ways to get 4 are 4 and 1 and 2 and 2, so it must be 4 and 1, and it must be negative 4 and plus 1. Okay, multiplied by, and here again we have a quadratic which we can factorize, the numerator here. So you have x and x, and we have everything is positive, so they must be positive. The product is positive, the sum is positive, and two numbers multiplied to give you 5. Well, there's only one choice, 5 and 1, and add 5 plus 1 is 6, so that's fine. So x plus 5, x plus 1, over... And the denominator, we see there's a common factor of 2 and x, so 2x is common. And we're left with x plus 5, 2x squared plus 10x. So once we've done that, we can now cancel out any common factors that are in the numerator and the denominator. So for example, here we see x plus 5 with x plus 5. We have x plus 1 and x plus 1. We have the 2x and the 4x cancel, leaving you with 2. So in the numerator, we're left with 2 times x minus 2. And the denominator, we're left with x minus 4. So we can leave our answer like that. That's fine. We can leave the answer as 2x minus 4 over x minus 4. Both of those are fine. Okay, nothing cancels here. So you can expand it. You can, both of these are considered simplified. Okay, the only time when something uh, is an algebraic fraction, you have to factorize it to cancel that common factor. If there's no common factor, you can leave it factorized one part factorized, or you could leave it expanded. They're both considered as equally simplified as each other. So that's part A. Now, part B is something which in this particular chapter of the book is out of place. It belongs in P3, but not at the end of chapter one. It actually belongs at the end of the chapter on logarithms and exponents from, from P3. Okay, and the reason being is introducing this lin. If this question was about, you know, talking in terms of log to the base of two or, or you know, log or any, any other, you know, type, log to any other base, then it would be fine in this place. All right. However, because it's dealing with lin, 
that's probably why the students call this a, you know, a demonic wording question, a question with demonic wording, I don't understand. It's not that difficult, really, but um, it's just out of place in chapter one in this book. It should be later on, it should be the end of the chapter that introduces to what Lin means, that's all, okay? Um, because we did, dealt with logarithms in P2, so if it was log to the base 2 or log to the base 4 or log means log to the base 10, it would be fine. But because of the lin and we haven't covered, well, those who who start this book and are looking at this question at the beginning of this book before they've gone to the chapter on logarithms and they haven't been introduced to it, it's in the wrong place, that's all. Otherwise, it's pretty simple, okay? As you can see that these terms in here are actually the same terms that we see there if you look at them very carefully. So what we have to do is use the laws of logarithms first to try to simplify this. So what I'm going to do is I can see I have a lin term on this side, a lin term on that side. I'm going to make sure that they're both together. So this is lin of 4x squared minus 8x times x squared plus 6x plus 5. And I'll put minus the lin of x squared minus 3x minus 4 times 2x squared plus 10x. Okay, and that's equal to 6. So I've just basically subtracted this from both sides. I've left the constant on this side and the two lin terms on this side. Now we know that the lin of A minus the lin of B is equal to the lin of A divided by B, the laws of logarithms. The same base, log to the base E basically. And so you've got the subtraction here, so you can divide these two terms in those lins. So I can make one lin term, and I can have in that lin term, on the numerator I'll have 4x squared minus 8x times x squared plus 6x plus 5, over, and then I'll have this, x squared minus 3x minus 4 times 2x squared plus 10x, and that's equal to 6. Now what I can do is I can use the meaning or the definition of logarithms. I know log to the base a of b equals c leads us to a to the power of c equals b. This is the base. This is the power. This is the result. So remember, lin, it just means log to the base e. Okay, so log to the base e of b equals c means e to the power of c equals b. That's all. This is lin means log to the base e. So this would be e to the power of 6 is equal to all of this. 4x squared minus 8x times x squared plus 6x plus 5 all over x squared minus 3x minus 4 times 2x squared plus 10x. And if you notice, this is exactly the same as what we started with, x squared, 4x squared minus 8x times x squared plus 6x plus 5 over x squared minus 3x minus 4, and you've got here 2x squared plus uh, 10x. All right, so it's exactly the same. So this will basically, you know, as we can say, you know, looking at from part A, instead of having to do all over again, from part A, we can just simplify this to 2x minus 4 over x minus 4. So we can say e to the power of 6 equals 2x minus 4 over x minus 4. Okay, that's what we found this simplifies to. So now we want to express, it says express x in terms of e. All right, when it says ex find x in terms of e, it means your answer should say x equals and e should be in your answer somewhere. x in terms of e means find x, x equals, but the answer must have an e in it somewhere. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to cross multiply or multiply both sides by x minus 4 first to get rid of the fraction. I'll expand this bracket so it's e to the power of 6 times x minus 4 times e to the power of 6 is equal to 2x minus 4. I want to make x a subject, so I'll bring the x's together on one side. Remember, this is just e to the power of 6 is just a number, so it's e to the power of 6 minus 2x equals, and this will be 4 to the power of. 4e to the power of 6 minus 4. Just added that to both sides, subtracted that from both sides. Now I have x as a common factor. So x and I have e to the power of 6 minus 2 equals 4e to the power of 6 minus 4. So that means x is equal to 4e to the power of 6 minus 4 
over e to the power of 6 minus 2. Now there's my answer. If I do try to factorize to see if there's common factors, you will end up with this. 4 e to the power of 6 minus 1 over e to the power of 6 minus 2. Nothing cancels. So I can leave my answer like this. I can leave my answer like that. Both of them are correct. So I've expressed x in terms of e. Okay, in my answer, there's, an, there's things in terms of e. And I've got my answer saying x equals. Okay, so it's not really that difficult, the question. It's just maybe it's placed in the wrong part of the book. Should be after we have been introduced to Lin. But by the end of P3, of course, you should be familiar with that. So at the end of P3, it's fine to have this question. You know, it's no problem. It's not really too difficult. Okay, but one of the students requested me to answer it. So I have answered it. So I hope that was clear. Other questions from this particular chapter of P3? Uh, the textbook, the textbook you can find in the playlist over here. Other questions from this topic of algebraic methods um, from um, P3 can be found in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. You can watch the video here, which will take you or tell you how to use my channel to find what you need quickly. Thank you for watching and see you soon.